I might sound different because I'm recording differently. Go subscribe. At first glance, the humongous doesn't look like someone who's any good with words or compassion. What with him being a 6'3", 240 pound beefhead, wearing some kind of BDSM leather jockstrap, and a steel hockey mask that covers his severely burned Darth Vader-like head. But surprisingly, his character is a reasonable negotiator, willing to provide a group of people safe passage through the wasteland if they give up their base and walked away with no resistance. Although this deal would cost his men some time and resources, he continues to remain relatively peaceful, even though he could easily run in and slaughter the entire group. And even after getting one of his men killed and another dismembered by a child of the group, he continues his attempts at a peaceful transaction just with the extra price of the child on top of everything else. He truly is a somewhat reasonable man. Even in his first moments on screen, he was sitting calmly while speaking with the people and calming his men down, telling them not to attack. And the second time the Humongous is on screen, he states that he doesn't believe what he's doing is evil, he just sees the people as greedy and their plans for the gas, or they call it guzzoline, to be stupid. So he wants it for his team so it can be utilized in a way he believes to be correct. Along with the fact he spends most of his time calming people down and talking with them level-headedly, the weapon and clothes he has reflects his way of thinking as well. The Warrior of the Wasteland, which is another name he gets introduced as, has the philosophy to be calm and reasonable while influencing with his immense fear and strength. So while he speaks with people in a non-terrifying manner, his outfit of leather straps, a steel hockey mask, and some cuffs terrifies the listener. The weapon he uses also shows his more calm and reasonable side. While other Wastelanders use bow and arrows and crappy guns that are gruesome and dirty, he uses a perfect condition 44 caliber revolver stored in a well-made satin carrying case. This clean and polished weapon quickly and efficiently dispatches any problems with little to no mess. The writer of Mad Max 2, George Miller, also revealed that the Humongous was a military man before the apocalypse, and the Humongous himself in the movie mentions how he lost someone close to him. I understand your pain. We all lost someone we love. These two factors here, I believe, are the reason he tries to resolve things calmly and with words, before erratically and with violence. His time in the military, which he might have spent killing, and when he lost his own loved one, caused that pain, which in turn gave him the slight amount of leeway and compassion he held. And although he understands pain and loss, and wishes to avoid it, he's also a PTSD-ridden psychopath, so when people are caught trying to run away, his army tortures and eventually murders them. Along with this psychopathic personality, he may not have a short temper, but when you do anger him, he will throw out all his reasoning and caution, which inevitably caused his demise as he rode a nitrous-powered death machine at max speed into the front of a semi-truck. The Warrior of the Wasteland, the Ayatollah of the Rock and Rolla, the Humongous, is a man who, while willing to kill and maim, would much rather compromise and negotiate instead. Because in the apocalyptic wasteland he exists in, as the man himself says, There has been too much violence, too much pain. But anyways, my name is Marco of MIC Studios, my last name isn't important, and roll credits.